it's great to sit and mingle and interact with people over a shared love of Michigan, right? And I know we can do what we do only because you guys support us and only because you guys have the intelligence to follow along with what we do, unlike fans of Michigan State and Ohio State. They don't get it. Amen. They can't follow along. Fans and some coaches. And some coaches. Yeah. I've gone back and forth with several of them, including a recent Buckeye coach. Folks, we got to thank Grand Traverse Resort and Spot because it's brought to you. The reason why we do Monday Morning Quarterback is because of GTR. So give them a round of applause, please. And so one of the things that comes across walk, working with Devin and Al and Vance is how many people don't know football that talk yeah. football on TV. These guys, they played it, they coached it, they know it. So all season long, Devin was saying they need to let J.J. cook. They need to let him cook, let him eat. Let him cook, let him eat. We get to the Ohio State game, and a lot of people were saying, can't do it. Yeah. You said. I said he can. And, and the thing is, it's like um, the way that Michigan plays football it's centered around the run game, right? We all know that. And, and if something isn't broke, why would you continue to try to fix it? It's kind of the, the point I was making. And the thing is, if you don't get an opportunity to continue to throw the ball, drive it down the field, and see defenses because you're running the ball and you're being successful at it, you may need some grace period. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, and, and from the things that I saw uh, from – from JJ, he was special in a lot of things that the, the common fan just won't be able to see. Reading defenses, knowing where to go with the ball, even though it's a small thing, maybe a hitch route or, or a shallow cross, knowing and having his eyes in the right place and knowing where to go with the ball, you can see like, okay, if the time comes, he'll be able to help this team and he'll be able to win the game and, and put the game on his shoulders. And also, the boy can run. If you understand the plan because of what you see, and you know, if I retreat, this is going to be a big play, or at the worst, it's going to be a first down. And, and so he did a very good job with that. And that's something that, you know, I'm sure Ohio State was looking like, this young guy, he won't be able to do it, right? And so that's why they made the decision to play zero. And then they did it again. <laughs> I mean, they just don't learn their lesson. And so now you got, all right, Cameron Martinez. You guys don't know Cameron Martinez, but I know Cameron Martinez. I call Cameron Martinez's games. Cameron Martinez played quarterback his entire high school career. Now, outstanding athlete. I would love to have him at Michigan, maybe teach him to play defense or whatever, maybe just get the ball in his hands. He was outstanding, right? He rushed for 2,000 yards every single year in high school from his freshman year all the way to his senior year from the quarterback position, right? So dynamic athlete. He's at safety. What are we doing? <laughs> Why do you have him covering one of the, uh, the better receivers on, on one of the better programs in the country one-on-one? -on -one? And you're going to see what Cornelius Johnson does to this safety. He's running to the half. Half the defense doesn't know what they're doing. You got eyes in the backfield because of guys like Donovan Edwards, right? You can put the ball in his stomach, and they, oh, man, what are you doing? I don't know. Get your eyes out of the backfield. He's spinning around. And now you watch this game, and it's like, where's the red jerseys? Where's the red jerseys? And, and, and they don't exist. A lot of people's lasting memory is the TCU game. Yeah. I think that's just going to fuel his grind even more. And so there are two reasons. There are two plays in that game that I think were the most important. And they were the turnovers. Yeah, of course. They were the turnovers in that game. And so I've, I've talked to him about it, and we talked about it on the show, because our show is very unbiased, OK? We <laughs> hey, listen, we're very unbiased, but Michigan's just doing so good. It just seems like, you know, we homers for Michigan, you know what I mean? But the thing is, it's like we, we, we kind of take plays that are bad, and we dissect those as well. And, and, and I, I think we are kind of a service of, like, they get a chance to watch that and say, maybe we didn't even see that on film, and maybe and that can help us out. But, but for JJ. Uh, he lost us this game, right, because of his decisions on, on these two plays. And, and that's something that I think that he has the courage to take on his shoulders, right? Obviously, there are a lot of different plays in the game that can be made and, and whatever the case may be. But when you give essentially two touchdowns to the other team and you only lose by, what, one score, right, you have to take that on yourself. And so these are things that are very fixable. And so you don't want these things to happen, right? You want to beat TCU. You want to go smash Georgia. You want to win a natty, right? But for the future, I think that this, this failure is something that's going to lend an opportunity for this team to be even better somehow than they were a year ago. A lot of people are unsure about Kirk Campbell just because he doesn't have a big name and things like that. And it's a big job, right? The quarterback coach at the University of Michigan. But I'm just telling you, two years ago, I think it was, or maybe a year ago, I went to go watch a practice during camp. And I went to go talk to uh, Fred Jackson. And he looked at me. He said, listen, man, if you want to know anything about this offense and what the quarterback's supposed to do, ask 
him. And he was pointing to Kirk Campbell, and then, and then now he's the quarterback coach and whatever. And so I think that J.J. is in great hands. So last example, and we'll bring the, the players up. All right. Because the second interception, I think, is even more likely to not happen again because I think it has everything to do with a quarterback and where he is in his profile. Yeah. And then his connection. With and what he means coach. by profile, I don't like this play. Throw it out. <laughs> right. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do this play. And so, so many times quarterbacks, they don't want to do that, right? Because you don't want to make it seem, especially when you're young, you don't want to make it seem like you can't do something, right? But there are just some plays you just don't like. Right, and, and, and one of my least favorite plays on the planet is throwing a looky. And so a looky is an inside slant to the uh, slot receiver, right? And if you know anything about football, you can understand why it's so hairy, right? You got middle linebackers there. The linemen are extremely tall. You can't truly see what's developing and what's happening. And so I hated it. Now, does that mean I never threw it? Absolutely. I threw it a couple times, Drew Dilly off the play action or whatever. But Borges, if there's other plays, choose that one. Yeah. I do not want to run this play just because I don't like it. And, and, and from what we learned, J.J. expressed that he did not like that play in practice. Like play. And somehow, some way, that damn play gets called <laughs> with your back against the wall. I don't get it. Get two first downs, that's a win, right? Get two first downs, you'll be able to punt the ball away if you don't get to third, and you'll flip the field. We're in the black zone, and we're calling plays that our quarterback doesn't like. Now, I, I blame J.J., right, because I'm a guy, you take responsibility. You need to make it more clear. Don't call this play. So to me, that's something that with his profile now, I was like, man, I, don't call that. Don't call it. And don't not, call especially it. not right here. <laughs> right. Not right here. Right. And then with your vibe with the coach now, it's of to course. the point where you can you be can, like, you can have that conversation. And also, this dude was playing out of his mind. He ain't ever played a game this good in his life. 13. He, he has never it. played a game that good in his life. He will never probably play a game that good in his life again. And, and he had J.J.'s number. He was making tackles all over the field. He, he had an outstanding game of his life, and he didn't get his name called once in the next game. That game is going to be a key. When we look back, when Michigan wins the national championship, of course. we're going to look back at that game as one of the big keys of course. as to why. All right, with that, it's time to get some players up here. Fellas, welcome to the stage. How you doing? Good, you? Yeah, how the, uh, how's the offseason been going for you guys? All oh, good, man. Can't complain. Junior, how you doing? Doing phenomenal. Yeah, man. Glad you guys could join us up here on the stage, Monday morning quarterback style. And so we went back over this season. We're going to start with defense. We're going to start with Junior because there are a few games that really stuck out to me where it could really, really feel your presence. Really could start feeling it from the, from the early part of the season, from the, from the very first few games. And I went back and I grabbed a few. Let's go back to the UConn game. So, Junior, did you ever play offense at all coming uh, up? I, I played a little bit in high school. And you know, work on your hands a little bit? Uh, yeah, but I mostly, you know, running, running back. You, you ever get on the jug machine at all? I've been getting on the jug machines with him a little bit. Hey, okay. sure, I, I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what play you about to pull up. Man, I was already, I was, I was already looking at. Hey, well, you were in the right place though. I mean, we I mean, drew this play up. And so understand, I mean, he, he tracks across the defense here. Number 25. And you get out in your zone. What happened? <laughs> what happened? I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about scoring, man. What happened, man? Man, let the man tell a story, because you got to tell something. So you got to explain something. That's a lollipop. That's about as easy as it gets. <laughs> I played, I was already thinking about the end zone. I, I was thinking about what move I was going to do. <laughs> and, uh, hey, man, look. Hey, you that's were, an outstanding play to be standing over the center right. and get outside to even get hands on the ball. But next time, yeah, I mean, make sure, hey, hey, make sure you don't miss a judge day. Now I want you to talk us through one because just like we talked about how we look at the TCU game, you can look at this play, that, these plays that J.J. had that you know this is going to stick with him and going to make him be better next time around. So it was a play in the Ohio State game that I was looking at it's like, man, I think that's Junior. And I can see, because you're going to see Ohio State try to do this again. Oh, yeah. So here we go. I think you know the one that I'm talking about. Oh, I know this one. Yep. <laughs> yep. So you guys have a double on number 18, the best receiver yeah. in the country. As you should. As you should, right? Be nice. <laughs> right? So he's taken out. 18 is taken out by two guys. Out. I, I got I to help more on, on, with, with Mikey on that play. 
you know, I just got to take them too. Just be low. Be so this low is guy. Mikey right here. Yeah. Man to man. This is Junior right here. We call him the rap player. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a football term, by the way. Yeah, and so what, kind of talk to people through what you say you need to do different next time. Uh, differently, I just got to kind of have to open up to him. I, I don't need to get as much width as I'm getting right now. Mm. And then I'll, I'll be the low player, so I'll, I'll carry him all the way through. And then Mike, Mike, Mikey could just play over the top. It's going to make it a lot easier, especially when we're just straight man to man like that. You know, we got everybody covered. You know, the only other guy that can come out is a quarterback. And the touchdown in the Big Ten championship game to me was the run of the year for you. Uh, I mean, because, because of the cut you made, the read you made, and the fact that it was you kind of going outside the structure of the play and just making the play happen. So I'm gonna bring this up right now. This is a basic split zone. Now, understand, when you watch this play, he is not going the direction that the play is supposed to go in. He is going the direction that superhuman beings can go in and still make a play. So. Well, let it run, and then you tell us what you were thinking on this play, because... Now, we're going to see the back view. Now, now, hold up, hold up, hold up, right here, right here. Now, it looks like, Donovan, it looks like you get about five yards up in here, man. Four or five yards. That's what it looks like. I don't want that, though. Okay, all right. All right. That's want, the play. I want, I want the big plays, you know? I hear you. I hear you. This, but this is the way the play is supposed to go. You can get four or five yards, but you don't do that. Now, I talked to your running back coach. He said, all right, you could go a different way, but you better get at least four or five yards. So you did that, right? You did that. So what did you – now tell me what you – when you look at this, in the moment, take yourself back to the moment. What did you see right then and there? I mean, they the way that they like called this defensive call is like such a perfect call. Like, you know what I'm saying? They got the sand the sand backer blitzing into the same gap, like where like you know like I like where like like you see how like Carson's going to go get number twenty, fifty two is gonna get twenty. Like that's where like, you know, like you can't you could run, but they completely stopped that. So like you know, like I seen number six blitzing, and you know, like I'm like, all right, like if I make him miss, then like you know, I got something, I got something cooking. You feel me? <laughs> and, at, and at that point, it's child's play too. You feel me? Hey, nah. <laughs> that's not a regular human being play. That's, but no, that's it's, not a it's it's hard though. Like it's hard like to be able to like like switch your hips. You know what I'm saying? And like make somebody miss like that close. That is hard. Yeah, man. And then there are plays where they tell you, all right, you're going to have to make a dude miss on this play, Donovan. You had a uh, – there was a duo play in that game that you did that on, right, where you just – you know, you went out. You had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with, with a guy on the outside, and you made it, you made it happen. I'm running short on time. I'm getting a wrap-up call, so I'm not going to bring it up. Or maybe I am. Maybe, maybe I am. Just real quick, real quick. Yeah, I pulled I pull this out of uh, Blake Corn's bag right here. You know, never, you didn't really see me, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it didn't make somebody miss. I pulled that out of Blake's bag right there. All right, so tell the people what you're reading on this play. This is a duo. Uh, everybody's blocking down, so the whole point of this uh, scheme is, like, to get me one-on-one -on -one with the corner, and we did that. And the corner, number one, he had outside leverage. So it's like, I can't really, like, go outside because then it would be, like, a, a three-yard, two-yard loss. So, you know, I just gave him a little Blake Quorum shimmy shuffle, made him miss, chopped the feet, how, how BC do it. You know, he missed. <laughs> That's Coach Hart's guy, too. So, so on, the play, on the play, your read is the mic, though, right? Yes. And so you read the mic, you go opposite the mic, and you got to beat this unblocked guy. You know something, man. On the outside. <laughs> hey, man. But yeah, I'm reading the mic, and the mic goes in. He, he like nowhere to be found, and like the really the scheme is like to run away from the mic, and like really just get me one on one with the corner because corners don't want to tackle. Besides Will hey, Johnson, man. hey, you know the coach is saying, "I put you in position." He said, "Coach, make you make that tackle, coach." <laughs> Business decision. Right, right. Well, listen, fellas, we could do this all day, but we got two teammates to get to. So appreciate your time. Good luck this season, fellas. I know. And that's the championship is coming.